Hello. Welcome to Aging Well in America. I'm Anne Marie Guattari, your host. Every day, 10,000 people in the United States turn 65 years old. 5.5 million people are aged 85 or older. By the year 2050, which isn't all that long from now, 20 million people will become 85 years or older. Are we ready? Is America ready? There's so much good work going on around the world, around the country, and right here in our own community. And we have with us today guests from American House who are doing some of that very good work. I'd like to welcome Rob. Thanks, Emory. And Kevin from Thanks. American House. Thanks for Thank us. you again for joining us. It's our pleasure. Thank you. American House is really one of the fundamental, foundational uh, uh, assisted independent living uh, communities in, uh, in Michigan and now growing in, into Florida. And uh, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about what's new at American House. I know sure. there's some exciting things going on right here in the Gross Point community. Uh, well, there certainly is. And uh, thank you again for having us and uh, recognizing us as such. Uh, uh, American House is a Michigan-based company. My father founded it in 1979, and, uh, and our offices are currently in Bloomfield Hills. Uh, and um, we manage now 34 locations, okay. mostly in southeastern Michigan, with uh, two in uh, northern Michigan, Petoskey and Charlevoix. Got it. How many how many beds or rooms uh, total? How many Over people? Over 3,000. Really, 3,000 people live in. That's correct. Yeah, and uh, and as you mentioned before, we uh, hope to expand and sort of follow the the, the pipeline down to uh, southwest Florida as sure. well. Sure. But you did touch on uh, kind of what I would describe as our most exciting project. Uh, going on right now, and that is uh, our joint venture with Henry Ford Health Systems and uh, the utilization of Cottage Hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, we are, I think it's probably the worst kept secret in town, <laughs> but uh, we hope there's to... The, uh, uh, there's the uh, um, image of art, it. Artist rendering, yes. yes. We, uh, we hope to convert the, uh, the second and third floor of Cottage Hospital into American House uh, Senior Living uh, Communities. And uh, we're currently targeted to um, add 42 units of independent living and uh, about 28 units of assisted living and maybe 14 or 15 units of uh, what we describe as memory care. Now, is this a different approach in terms of the assisted living and the um, memory care? Do your other homes? We, we have experience have? in that, yes. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's a, it's a huge departure from what we uh, would our core business is. It's I actually, see. I think, a, a wonderful addition to our core business. Sure. And um, I actually got into an interesting conversation about the differentiation between assisted living and independent living mm -hmm. and memory care and whatnot. And certainly there are sort of legal definitions uh, and licensure definitions. But you know what? Really at the core of it, we're talking about taking care of taking care of our parents, taking right. care of our grandparents. That's right. And so um, while we certainly have to be cognizant of, of those differentiators, uh, the fact remains that um, I think it's difficult to get away from the idea that we're just taking really good care of our of our senior population. Yeah. And that means what their needs are, wherever right. they're living, we're there to help them. That's correct. Right. And, and uh, uh, so again, you know, what services are provided and how you deliver them and, and the physical plant, you know, do do uh, enter into that discussion or that equation. Yeah. But the core business is just taking taking care of people. Taking care of people there and making their days uh, as I like to call it, making their days Cheerful. <laughs> uh, we use in, and, the word uh, enrichment a lot. Enrichment, that's right, yes. enriched lives. Before we get into um, a little more about sort of the, the history and um, some of the other wonderful things American House is involved in, um, tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the, the cottage uh, development, the cottage project, sure. because it's community-based. I know, uh, Kevin, you had mentioned earlier that you're involved in some aspects of that excitingly with the uh, symphony and so yes. forth. Yeah. So well, why don't I give you the, the, the basics do. and then we'll let Kevin uh, yeah. add, uh, add the, uh, the spice at the end there. But uh, <laughs> Great. Uh, I have uh, some uh, terrific partners uh, with a company called Redico uh, out of Southfield. And uh, our partners at Southfield, uh, at Redico rather, uh, Dale Wachowski is the president, a friend and uh, partner. Mm -hmm. And um, he uh, had the relationship with Henry Ford Health Systems. Uh, the conversation of what to do with with cottage hospital had been, uh, you know, a topic I think for some period of time. Um, the uh, what the thought process was there was such a tremendous need for this type of service, this type of housing, in, in the girls' points, was obvious. 
um, the reputation of Redico, the reputation of of Henry Ford Health Systems, mm -hmm. and candidly, or hopefully, the reputation of American House, mm -hmm. made for really a terrific um, uh, opportunity to do something special with with uh, the campus. The other uh, addition to that is the uh, renovation of the uh, Newberry House, which is now the that's, home of the uh, SOC. That's correct. Um, the the um, the Senior Center for Gross right. Point and services, uh, for, services older for older citizens, citizens. just are and uh, they've done a magnificent star. job with, yes. with that building. I was in it yesterday, as a matter of fact, and uh, Sharon and her crew did a you know just a terrific job. So we're really looking at this as a as a not a, a campus in the sense of like a, a college, but a campus in terms of a community. And so when you add the location, you know, on the hill and um, the different organizations that are involved, we think this is really, I would say, a, a national model when you're combining. The health systems, the location, the senior centers, the community, the developers, the operators, all these things, it's, it's special. It's special. It's very special. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. So you've got some exciting things planned for the, uh, for the residents once they move in, and that will be, um, we're going to be breaking ground here, you said, this fall. Correct. Hopefully um, in September. September of uh, 13, mm -hmm. with move-in about uh, 14 months we think from? It's, we, we anticipate about a 14-month okay. uh, development process. Okay. So, you know, always hard to say what that is. Sure, uh, so, sure. So perhaps around the, the first of the year, uh, 2015. Excellent. So what do you and, have up your sleeve, Kevin? Well, and so uh, to kind of to speak to, to what Rob was saying in terms of a campus, I know that uh, I had read not too long ago that there's anywhere <coughs> between, between 12 and 11, somewhere, somewhere around there, 10,000, 11,000. Older adults, older adults in the Gross Point area, and so uh, we hope we'll be a nice fit. That's for sure. Um, and I, I know one thing that specifically we're very proud of is our relationship with the Detroit Symphony. Mm -hmm. um, and we just uh, had about what about six, seven, eight hundred of Close our eight hundred residents. About a, about eight hundred of our residents. Um, they were um, gracious enough to welcome us down into Orchestra Hall, and so we brought down about eight hundred of our residents down downtown and, and had a concert and that was a, a nice feel-good thing for a oh, lot of people who haven't haven't been able to do that for many years sure. and, and uh, sure. so we hope to carry on those programs um, moving forward with Cottage. Very nice. So Very we're excited nice. about about those sort of opportunities and, and exploring some of the things that that the people in the Gross Point area like to do. Yeah. You know, I imagine you'd be taking advantage of the um, nearby shopping and restaurants and so mm -hmm. forth also on the hill a beautiful right. area. Yeah, right. and uh, you know, again, we mentioned kind of uh, some of the keys to this, to this project. Uh, I think the location is an obvious one. Yeah. And um, again, I think that hill location with the with the stores, the restaurants, and really what we envision is is living in a in, in you know you know. Let's be honest. I mean, these are going to be sort of most of the folks that are going to move in here. It's going to be a downsizing. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be a little need driven. But the fact that you have some of these needs doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the downtown area, Absolutely. that you can't walk to the shops, that you can't go have lunch at some of those great restaurants or have your daughter or your grandkids join you and do these things That's or go right. to the high school, which is right around the corner. The and high school, the library. The library, mm -hmm. all yeah. those things. The neighborhood and, club is you know, and, and so to kind of expand on, on what Kevin was talking about, what we think is really kind of cool is, is the synergies of all these things we talked mm -hmm. about. But, you know, uh, when you're in this process, you know, you lose track of the fact that that you're a celebrated veteran that you've been an active member of of the community and so what we hope to bring with this is is the ability to kind of get the services that people need you know the fundamental stuff in a wonderful environment with people their own age uh, you know but still be active in, in what we call life enrichment so we have a lot of time on yes. this this term life enrichment yes and so to Kevin's point whether it's being active in the symphony or uh, we mentioned the veterans uh, benefits that we you know really focus on um, we have a, a traveling choir, and we are active in spirituality and church, mm -hmm. church-related things. Mm -hmm. The senior centers, mm -hmm. um, baseball games. We have a great relationship with the Detroit Tigers, mm -hmm. so we send folks to the base. You know, we go to the baseball games. Mm -hmm. Maybe even stop by a casino on the way back. Yeah, you know, maybe. You never know. So. Well, the American House <coughs> brand, the logo is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's it's moving. <coughs> excuse me. It's on. Um, 
it's on uh, vehicles, it's of course on, on uh, sign, signage and so forth, but we know your people are active in around the community mm -hmm. because we see them being, um, mm -hmm. we see them on the, on the trips a lot and yeah. um, that's, that's really important. Yeah. <coughs> really yeah. great to see. Um, so you s touched a little bit about what's going on in, in, uh, in Gross Point and mm -hmm. I know there are some other facilities too in the area that you are uh, working on, and you'd mentioned earlier that uh, these uh, a, a, a few of your developments are being branded now as, as so-called signature line. Tell us Correct. a little about that. Right. Well, you know, again, I think uh, American House is large enough uh, to be able to offer all these different types of services and and the things we talked about a minute ago. But we also recognize that what's true in one community or what's important in one community may not be as important or more important in others. And um, so we think we have the size of our, of our infrastructure to do all these really terrific things, but we're still small enough where we can recognize the intricacies of different locations sure. and different communities and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have decided is to pursue a, sort of a rebranding uh, exercise through okay. what we call Signature Line. And, and recognizing that, um, and, and specifically uh, our location here in Girls Point would probably fit into that category, a new acquisition that we uh, we got involved with um, a couple months ago in um, called Park Place in uh, Warren would probably fit that category. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about uh, uh, relationships that we have in Birmingham and West mm -hmm. Bloomfield and, you know, and perhaps others are, are in the works. Uh, Native Springs, Florida could perhaps be one mm -hmm. of those as well. But uh, the idea is that, um, you know, it's so much of what people get involved with is, is the fixtures and finishes of the mm -hmm. building and, mm -hmm. and how does it fit into the community and, and if, if you're in Gross Point and you're and we're filming here in the Gross Point War mm -hmm. Memorial, if this has been a building that you've you've spent, you know, your lifetime in, are we consistent with that? Are we consistent with the library, the shops, the mm -hmm. the clubs, the you know, those types of things, the homes mm -hmm. that, that people have grown up in and we are those fixtures and finishes that are appropriate. But it's not just it's not that so much. It's what are the services that we're bringing that, that this next generation is going to expect. And so the best example I can give is that we anticipate utilizing tablets, uh, iPads, uh, for move-ins going forward. And so instead of getting the big packet of, of information and all the l leases and legal mumbo-jumbo and the, the obligatory activities calendar with bingo and cards and pinochle, uh, you're going to have an iPad that's going to have your name on it, your information downloaded, and you're going to have an American and your house. Your contract is on, is, the is on the iPad, right? Nice. You're going to have you're going to have your daily menu on your iPad, your activities for the day, the week, the month on your iPad. Wow. Specific things, but even what I think is cooler is is, is we're working towards a an, you have an AmericanHouse.com email address, so you can email your grandkids, you can email your family. There'll be an icon for Skype. And so you can, so he goes, well, oh. I've, I've never done that before. How am yeah. I going to learn? Yeah. Well, you're going to learn. You're going to learn. And not only that, <laughs> I mean, for anyone that has, uh, has one, you, you know that it's pretty darn easy. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and we'll train. And we'll, you yeah. know, we're not going to just throw it in, but actually train in the process. So that's it's pretty exciting. Maybe a little intimidating at first. And I hope it doesn't turn anybody off. But I think in the long oh, run, it's going to be a really terrific exciting. opportunity. So that's the kind of thing that yes. we're talking about higher end fixtures and finishes of course but maybe getting more involved in the in the culture you mentioned DSO veterans baseball mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. we're active with the Detroit Historical Society mm -hmm. and the Dawson Museum and those kinds of things so you know just culture activity community involvement you, you know all those American things. House has a real vision it's clear from from listening uh, to both of you um, you're, you're anticipating uh, the needs of our aging community. Who mm -hmm. those uh, as as we as we approach sure. that 20 million people being the age of 85 or older, um, you're really looking at who they are and mm -hmm. understanding that that population is different from those that are that age today. Right. That that's clear from from what you're describing to mm -hmm. me. And, and mm -hmm. that kudos to you. Well, and we look at this now and say, well, well, you know, again. We touched on a lot of these things. Uh, what what we don't know is uh, what are the ramifications of the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Medicare changes, Medicaid changes. Sure. You know, how are we reacting to those things as well? Uh, you know what I didn't touch on earlier is that there's also um, sort of an emphasis on on um, health and wellness, 
and what are we doing to strengthen our core muscles so we're not falling? Are we eating properly? You'd mentioned hydration in our preliminary discussions. Right. Um, you know, are we eating properly? Are we properly hydrated? Are we mentally active? Are we physically active? That's right. Are we getting our medicine in the proper doses at the proper times? I mean, if you do those five things well, your, your chances are a lot better than if you're living alone yeah. hoping it works out. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. again, I'm not talking about everybody, but I'm talking about, you know, sort of the, the frailer yeah. aging yeah. Uh, population. No, we, and those we, are uh, we understand. Um, I mean, we talked about it. Um, dehydration, UTIs are the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. going to lead to a fall. And then the, di the down, we all know. Mm -hmm. I mean, my parents uh, both, uh, that was the beginning of their, uh, the end of their days. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's, and that's with a very attentive adult sure. children um, uh, looking in on them. Um, it, it, it happens and right. we've got to anticipate in, by well, we taking care of ourselves now. What I think is really cool about this opportunity at Cottage is that, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, the second floor is going to be independent living mm -hmm. and it's going to be spectacular. There's a patio outside, uh, an interior corridor. We're going to do some things where patios and outdoor, you know, seating and whatnot mm -hmm, activity, mm -hmm. uh, and and a lot of the usual stuff that you come to expect: theaters and chapels and uh, activities rooms and fitness. Here we have on the screen here, Rob, uh, the, yes. the schematic of, of the uh, neighborhood. It, po yeah. Can you uh, point out where where things are? Well, uh, just um, by if I could, using directions. I'll say I guess. a verbal point here. Sure. Um, if you notice on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, going up and down, that would be Kirchival Road. Okay. And the facade uh, are the th are you know facing right, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. The road that kind of separates the two buildings, uh, about a third of the way up from the bottom, is Muir Street, and that's the Pearson building in the s in the lower right-hand corner and the parking structure in the lower middle. Mm -hmm. But I think what's important in this drawing. And by the way, the American House is going to be on the second and third floor of, of the Cottage Hospital building, which is in the, the, end of the building in the upper right. The, the, uh, the gold color. That's the Portica Share, is the gold area. The entrance to American House will Got be it. right there mm -hmm. on, on Kirchival Road, which, by the way, I think will be really a really cool it's addition. Good. It'll be um, beautiful. But I think what's important in that drawing is if you look in the, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll notice the blue, the blue uh, rectangle-like mm -hmm. building. And that's SOC, that's, mm -hmm. that's the Services for Older Citizens. Mm -hmm. Uh, and while that looks like it's a long way off, that's actually a very short walk from the back of the building to the front door of the, of the Newberry building. And so, what, again, what excites me is the idea of creating this, this partnership with SOC and yes. with Henry Ford Health Systems, where you have the ability to, you know, if you had any health-related issues, rehab, PT, OT, whatnot, you could get that downstairs, but you could meet all your friends at the Newberry house. Uh, and when, again, when I was there yesterday, I think it was uh, a Texas a Hold'em poker was going on in a movie, so uh, you could take your friends uh, loose change uh, in the <laughs> afternoons. <laughs> but I'm being funny. But the but the point is, that I think that's going to be a great campus it, with the SOC. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for pointing that out. That yeah. uh, that really does uh, put it all in in the place for us um, nicely. Mm -hmm. um, well, and if I could for a second, the other you mentioned a little bit about the um, you know the health of of these of this population yes. and uh, the falls and whatnot. The, I mentioned the second floor. Uh, the third floor is going to be dedicated to, you know, perhaps a higher acuity level resident, what we describe as assisted living and memory care. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about these falls, I think the other thing that's worth mentioning is that there's technology available now that can help prevent some of these falls are, you know, there's a number of reasons for it. And it's probably the greatest fear of, of, an, of an aging person is, is falling and the ability to either get help or mm -hmm. heaven forbid they, you know, break a bone, or particularly a hip, or something like that. And there's no way to prevent it entirely, but you can manage it in some ways. And what I'm finding more and more interesting, and what we hope to bring to this project, is there's also technological advancements. Mm -hmm. And so what they're finding now is that you can put uh, motion detectors in rooms that do not violate anybody's privacy, but begin to track trends and how people move about their room. And if the trend is broken, the computer will let you know that a certain resident has not either used the restroom or left their apartment or they have or they you know in other words the break in trends is an indicator of UTIs of falls of things of that nature Something's and so you can just begin a to little off. Right. right and so hopefully what you try yeah. and do is is address the problem before it becomes a crisis yes. 
And so what with technology, uh, again, not violating anybody's privacy, and there's a big difference. Sure. Um, but we think that that would be kind of a, a neat addition to to this project as well. So, you know, the, the, imp the implementation of technology is, yeah. is, is kind of a, yeah. something that, you know, we talk about this next generation, what do they expect? I think that's part of it too. I, th I, yeah. think, I think so, I think I, you're right. I think another thing that we're really proud of is we have uh, partners in our physical therapy departments and um, they're second to none and some of their own technologies and, and their own sort of equipment and um, in measuring uh, maybe s how s high at risk someone is to a fall. So we can mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. work with the families to, um, you know, intervene if, if you know, mm -hmm. if that's, you mm -hmm. know, in the best interest of the resident. And, and maybe you know. propose a, um, a, an exercise mm -hmm. uh, right. regimen for them or something, again, uh, something to strengthen their situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I think with the, the new baby, baby boomer generation, as they get older, they become to, you know, they become aware and, and you know, that there's a, there's this sort of emphasis on health and wellness, and, and that's sort of the things that we're kind of trying to anticipate and, and meet those needs. Yeah, that's so. great. Well, American House is much more than homes, which mm -hmm. is big, <laughs> no small thing. Homes for, for 3,000 people uh, here and in Florida. Um, there's, there's a philanthropic a, a foundation side that I, yes. I really want to learn more about as well. So sure. tell us what, uh, what the foundation is all about. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, bringing that up. It's something we're pretty proud of. And, you know, American House is a for-profit business, but we are local and we're family-owned. And, um, you know, I was mentioning earlier, we, you know, we have so much involvement in the community, but we also feel very fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, to have the access to the types of things that we have at American House. And so when we started getting involved in, in philanthropy, and, and there's some wonderful, wonderful causes, and, 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 um, but it became confusing and too, almost too much. And so uh, uh, at the time, and I, I'm actually still on the board of the Institute of Gerontology, which is a branch mm -hmm. of Wayne State University's uh, mm -hmm. nursing school, and, and a wonderful team down there uh, led by Dr. Lichtenberg, who does terrific research, yes. wonderful and needed research on on the aging process and, and neurological you know problems and socioeconomic issues and whatnot and uh, so but basically about five or six years ago uh, I, my, my father and I were talking about our involvement in, in philanthropy and said how hard can it be to do our own mm -hmm. we know where the people are we have the relationships and we later found out it's, it's harder than you might think. <laughs> but uh, but we, we teamed up with uh, Wayne State University and the Institute of Gerontology, and they were hugely helpful in getting this off the ground. But we created the American House Foundation, and uh, currently it uh, generates, I'd say, over $200,000 a year, uh, which isn't, you know, a huge budget by, you know, big, big um, uh, foundation sure. standards, but it's certainly a lot in this community. And a third of our money goes to research through Wayne State and through the Institute of Gerontology. So we'd like to think we're supporting a homegrown, mm -hmm. a Detroit-based institution there. Uh, and again, as I mentioned before, research on cognitive brain functions and disease and socioeconomic functions. And they do a lot of outreach and research and whatnot. And we're really proud yes, of that. Yes, they do tremendous work. They're and then right. uh, two-thirds of the money uh, goes to what I call an unmet needs fund. And so we've identified a number of nonprofits in the area that specialize in senior citizen needs. and you know, specifically the area agencies on aging mm -hmm. and adult well-being and the Hannon Foundation and Lighthouse and mm -hmm. Habitat for Humanity, to name a few. We've worked with the Cabrini Clinic and others, United mm -hmm. Way, over the years. Um, they have identified or they continue to identify people, elderly people, poor, people who are not residents of American House, mm -hmm. nor are they going to be residents of American House, but are in our community that, that need small amounts of money that would have a big impact. So we do a lot of home repairs or assistance with medication or to help pay off a bill that got mm -hmm. out of hand. Mm -hmm. I mentioned transportation, um, mm -hmm. any of those small needs that have a big impact. And we utilize the resources of these other nonprofits to identify people so we don't have any overhead. Nice. So about 95% so of the money goes directly to the, the areas I just mentioned. And so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a relatively small foundation, but it has a big impact on our community, and we're really proud so of it. So if someone's interested in applying for uh, one of these small grants, how do mm -hmm. they do so, Brad? Well, I just mentioned uh, the Area Agencies on Aging. Um, 
Adult Wellbeing, the Hannon Foundation. So go through those organizations. Yes, yes. we fund we fund those organizations I with understand. block grants, but then we approve we I, and I oversee it. Okay. We approve okay. all those grants so that we all know right. it's going to the people. In so need. the funding is coming through those other organizations. That's yep. But your website uh, and here's the uh, the address um, and the phone number. Uh, the American House website is a tremendous resource. Yes. Mm -hmm. As well, uh, um, I mean you've got. Uh, information important information um, on there for um, anybody who has um, uh, an, an elderly loved one mm -hmm. or is elderly themselves and uh, soon they'll be using your uh, your iPads to, uh, to, to, iPad access, to, to access your, your and, and the American House Foundation is is on that website as well mm -hmm. that's right yeah, very nice information on that well, uh, tell us real quickly. We've got just a couple of minutes left. Uh, just excited to know uh, what your plans are in Florida. Uh, sure, Florida. Well, the, the founder, Bob Gillette, uh, my dad, uh, mm -hmm. moved down there uh, several to uh, the Benita Springs area near Naples and Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we affectionately would suggest that he doesn't retire real well. So he's, uh, <laughs> he uh, has developed uh, 25 acres of, of land uh, to do essentially an American house, just as we've described it here today. Very similar, in fact, only with sort of a Floridian uh, design and look and some of the more um, activities that are geared more towards the Floridian lifestyle. But I think what's, what's kind of interesting about it was that so much of the Midwestern population, mm -hmm. you know, vacations there or lives there uh, during this uh, phase of their lives. And so I think there's an immediate connection to our community through the Naples and uh, Bonita Springs area. Uh, we have uh, made uh, some inroads in, in uh, expanding into other developments in that area, um, and we look to expand into Estero and perhaps up into uh, uh, the Fort Myers area, and um, you know perhaps beyond. But That's but right great. now the next one on the on the table is is Benita Springs. Wonderful. Well, uh, we have uh, come to the end of uh, uh, of a half hour. That's it. You can believe it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> it goes by so so very quickly. Flew by. Kevin, thank you so much. Oh, thank um, you. And. Thank you so much for coming, Terrific. Rob, and yeah, we you. really look to uh, stay in touch with you as, uh, as your cottage uh, property develops, and uh, please come back. Yeah, Can't we're wait. looking forward to it. Great. Well, we've come to another uh, end of, a, of an episode of Aging Well in America. Please send us your ideas for future shows here at the Gross Point War Memorial. Mm -hmm.